It's a new month, which means it's time to start a new wrap up vlog. It is currently the 9th of August and I just finished a book that I can talk to you about. So let's talk about the book that I read very, very quickly in order to beat Libby Chicken. I read Allie Hazelwood's newest release, Not In Love. This one I really enjoyed. I think it was right time, right place, right book. It was a really fun book and I've been finding lately that I've been struggling to really sink into books. I might be a little bit slumpy or I just really am trying to read books that I really, really love. I think it's a little bit of a fatigue with mandatory reads and lately my mandatory reads being books that I'm not really loving. It's given me fatigue in diving into a book and making it hard to really just fall in to a book. Luckily, this was such a fun time. This is the same as an Allie Hazelwood. It's what you would come to expect. It's a STEM romance. This one, however, is a little bit less fluffy and a little bit more smutty than I've come to expect from Miss Hazelwood. Our characters have gone through a lot and it kind of makes them come together and feel like they are the only two people that they can open up to about everything they've gone through and they come together in a relationship very much as a benefits only relationship at the start but obviously it progresses through the book. In this book we follow Rue and Eli. Rue works in food science. Did I understand the science? No. Did you need to? No. Eli works kind of for like a hedge fund or something in the financial situation and is now trying to buy out a loan on the company Rue works for. They, however, meet before this on a dating app. So they already know each other from one night prior to the events of him starting to like take over the company she works for. I really had a fun time with this book and I ended up giving it 4.5 stars. Now for this month, I also am participating in ping pong. So let me tell you how I filled a ping pong prompt with this book. We can't talk about the prompts during the month, but this video comes out once the month is over. So now I can share how I'm filling all my pick pong prompts. So for this book, I use this to fill the prompt of fave genre. I would say my favorite genres are fantasy and romance. I think it would be hard for me to decide which one. My most read genre from last year and my most read genre from this year are both romance. So I think this still works as my favorite genre, even though lately I've potentially been reading a bit more fantasy, but still my most read genre of the year, romance. So it is currently the 16th of August, and I'm going to tell you about the second book I finished. Let's be honest, that's very low for me, very, very low. And the reason being is I DNF'd a ton of books, which maybe at the end of this wrap up, we'll talk about DNFs. I don't typically DNF this many books, so I don't typically talk about that many. But this month, it's been a big DNF month. I'm definitely in a slump. But that's okay. We're going to just continue forward and try to find the books that I really am enjoying and kind of lean into mood reading for the second half of the month. That being said, I just finished a collab video for Can I Trust Brie from Four Paws in a Books. Now in this, I only finished one book. Again, I'm slumpy. But that one book was Ashes of the Sun by Django Wexler. And it is now my best book of the year. So even though I did not read a ton this month, the book that I have read is top tier. Absolutely top tier. I thought God Killer was untouchable. I thought God Killer was definitely going to be my top book of the year. Now it's sitting in second and this is first and I need to continue this trilogy. In this book, we follow twins Maya and Geyer. At the age of five, the order comes and takes Maya away because she shows this power to be able to connect to the chosen and become a centaur. Now, fast forward, they are like 17, 18 years old, and we see them in their separate factions of this world. Maya is almost a centaur. She is very, very close to becoming one for the order. Geyer has kind of assembled this group of thieves and explosion artists and all these things to take down the order because he has always hated the order because they took Maya and also injured him in the process. So he's always kind of had a hate for the order since he was like five years old. We see these two twins with their two kind of found families in their two different places that they are. We see Geyer with his group of thieves and, you know, explosion people and all the things he needs to start his rebellion. And we see Maya over here with her 
centargs and her mentors and her friends that she knows in the order and the people that she's meeting in the order. And we're seeing those two sides of this political system. And the politics in this are very integral and very deep. There's a past war. What is the right side of this? Who is right? Who is wrong? There's a lot of areas of gray. And we see the two twins on opposite sides of that. In this book, the characters are my favorite part, although the world building is also fantastic. The characters are so vivid and each of them have such great personalities that I just loved every single one of them, even the ones that I'm supposed to hate, which I absolutely do. You you hate some of these people. They're horrible. But the character work for those people are still great. Like the character work is great in this book. The ships in here in the two factions, there are couples that you want to see get together. And I really hope that I see them either get together if they haven't already or continue together as we read the rest of the books. The people that you trust in the beginning, you may still trust at the end, or you may not. The people that you maybe didn't like at the beginning, maybe by the end you like them. It's really interesting how you see the characters kind of change and grow and evolve or secrets come out throughout the book. Loved, loved, loved this book. If you like political fantasy, I highly recommend picking this up. I'll be reading the sequel next month. It's already on Timmy's TBR. Also, this is Star Wars coded for those that do like Star Wars. It has been many a year since I've watched Star Wars, so that didn't necessarily hit as well for me as maybe it would for other people, but it didn't detract. I just maybe didn't understand all the references because it has been years since I've watched the original trilogy. Years. I maybe need to do a rewatch. Maybe after I read the series, I'll go back and watch Star Wars. For Pick Pong, I use this as a five-star prediction prompt because I kind of knew I was going to love this book and I didn't know how much I was going to love it, but I suspected I would love it a good amount and I definitely have. So I just finished a collab video trying out cozy fantasies because you know, I don't really know if I like cozy. I haven't really tried it. Wasn't really sure if I like cozy fantasy. So I did a whole collab video with Kirsty trying just that. And what we learned during that vlog is that yes, I do like cozy fantasy. I actually think cozy fantasy is helping me get out of my slump. Yesterday I had a five star read. I read like 220 pages. I had a great day reading and it's been a while since I've fallen into a book. Really Ashes was the last time and that was 10 days ago. Like that was a long time ago. For me, 10 days between books is a very long, long, long time. So the two books I read were Legends and Lattes. That is the first book. And this is, you know, classic cozy fantasy. Everybody talks about this book. So I had to try this one. It's about Viv, who is an orc, who goes to this town to start a coffee shop. They've never heard of coffee before. They call it like bean water. And I just loved it. There was a baking element to it. The characters were great. I loved all the characters in this book. It doesn't have a ton of plot. I mean, the main plot is really just them forming a bakery, but the characters are why you're here. And because I do like baking content, this was adjacent enough to things that I liked to pique my interest. I ended up giving this four stars and used it for Pick Pongathon for a book on Goodreads that has over a four plus star rating. Then I read that five-star read that I just told you about, The Honey Witch by Sydney J. Shields. This is perfection in my eyes. It did drag a little in the middle. It did. It dragged a little in the middle. But the beginning was so beautiful. The ending was so beautiful. I'm overlooking the fact that it dragged in the middle. Because to give this less than five stars for my feeling about it would be just inaccurate. It would be completely inaccurate to my reading experience of this book. The quotes in this book, I highlighted so much in my Kindle. I need to get a physical copy and actually annotate that. That is needed. This feeling of our honey witch who is Marigold. Marigold is a honey witch and she takes on her power. And when she takes on her power, it comes with a curse that she can never fall in love. She can never find a soulmate. She goes to this small island with her grandmother to learn to be the honey witch and protect the island. Her friend August, who she knew as a child, comes to the island and brings Lottie with him. Lottie and Marigold instantly have a connection. And it is this love story that is basically fated to be failure because of this curse that Marigold has. And this fated 
but doomed love story really gave me a fairy tale feel and that definitely worked for me. My heart was pulled in so many directions. It made me cry at times. It made me feel joy at times. I went through all sorts of emotions. This one definitely has a lot higher stakes in this with Marigold keeping the island safe from this ash witch. And also there's a lot of medical things that are happening that Marigold is helping with. Please check trigger warnings. I loved it. I gave it five stars. It was so great. The LGBTQIA plus representation in this book is top tier. I loved how it was just so normalized. We had so many different types of relationships in this book and none of our other characters said anything. It was just so normal that this was just how it was. And I wish life could imitate that type of art at times because it was very much love who you love. And I loved that. For this book, I used this for pick pong for an even page number. I just filmed a haul of fall decorations so you can kind of see it in camera. I'm not going to move it because I'm already sat here and I'm just going to keep filming what I need to film, which is the next wrap up of a couple books that I have finished. I have finished two books since I last talked with you. One of them is Dinosaur Sanctuary Volume 4. This is the last volume of this that I can currently read. It's the last one that is out. There will be more though because it ended on a part one situation. So obviously part two is going to be in the next volume. This is a series of manga that I absolutely love. It's so cute. It's so cozy. It follows a bunch of zoologists who work in a dinosaur sanctuary protecting dinosaurs who for some reason or other can't be in a bigger dinosaur zoo. Maybe they're missing a tusk or something that kind of makes them not wanted by the bigger zoos and they take care of them here. In this one, we have a dinosaur that gets out. It gets out, it is in the city. It doesn't get out of the sanctuary. We actually don't know where it comes from. It gets out of somewhere, but not the sanctuary. But the sanctuary is called in to come and get this dinosaur out of the city. The dinosaur cannot be in the city with the people. It was fun. It was cute. Four stars. Really liked it. The other book that I read was my Patreon book club's book for the month, which was Heaven Breaker by Sarah Wolf. I did vlog this, but for the patrons, so there isn't like a vlog to go see my full thoughts. So I'll give a good description here of really what I thought. In this book, we follow Sonali. We start off this book with a bang. Sonali has just murdered her father. We find out that he was a duke and she was raised in the lower levels of society. There's a lot of classism in this society on this planet or space station called Esther. She actually never knew who her father was until he sent an assassin to murder her and her mother. The assassin spares Sonali for reasons that we do find out in the book, but I'll leave it there. And she is now bent on revenge against her father. She murders him. She steals his steed, which is like a machine that they fight out in space in a tournament. It's very medieval. They do jousting, but it's high tech medieval, which was really cool, that juxtaposition. And she goes out thinking she's going to die now. She's killed him. She wants to meet her mother in the afterlife. And that's her plan. She survives. And someone named Dravik takes her in and is like, he was not the only person who was a part of the plot to kill you and your mother. For every tournament like phase you win, I will kill one of the people who was part of the plot. If you win the whole tournament, all of them will be gone and you will have gotten your full revenge. She agrees to this and he starts training her in his steed, Heavenbreaker. And we find out how these steeds work. There's something called fake AI, which is not quite like true AI, where true AI can start kind of working on its own and is quite dangerous. They have a bit more control over the fake AI, but there's a lot of conversation around AI in this book. And it just gets crazier from there with what is going on in this society and what is going on with these steeds and what they are and what they're doing and what the grand plan is. I still have so many questions. I have so many questions that I cannot wait to get answered in book two. I will definitely be continuing. This is the best Red Tower book that I have read. I gave it four stars. I'll definitely be continuing with the series. For Pick Pong, I use this for Pole Pick because my patrons actually picked this one. So that is how I uh, use this to fill a Pick pong -a -thon prompt. So I finished two more books. Neither of these were super winners for me, but I have finished them. The first one I did during a vlog, getting ready for fall, doing kind of like a fall reset, where I read Pumpkin Spice Cafe by Lori Gilmore. 
this was just okay for me. I gave it three stars. I liked the Gilmore Girls vibes, but I wanted more of them. I feel like it was a bit just one note. And if you're going to write a really eccentric small town, it needs to punch more than this one did. In this book, we follow Jeannie. Jeannie is moving to this small town, taking over the cafe from her aunt who has decided to retire. And Jeannie meets the local farmer, Logan. They have a romance. I did not really care for this romance. It just didn't feel super believable to me. So that was also part of the book that didn't work for me. It was very much three stars. And for Pipong, I used Pumpkin Spice Cafe to do the prompt of library book. I did have it on my Kindle, but I borrowed the audio from the library. And currently my library is on strike. So Libby is the only way I can access my library anyway. Then I read Kiss the Girl by Zordea Cordova. This is the third book in the Meant to Be series. They are contemporary romance retellings. This one is Little Mermaid. Each one is written by different authors, and I think that actually stood out the most in this book. This book is the least fairy tale retelling of the three. The author really leaned on the fact that the characters had the same names, Ariel and Eric, and yes, it is a romance, but a lot of the nods to the story just weren't there that are in the other books in this series. We did have our King Triton character and we did kind of have an Ursula character, but not really. I mean, other than the fact that it's a woman in the story, it didn't actually resemble the plot of Ursula in any way, really. This book was not my favorite in the series. And also for a good portion of time, Ariel is pretending to be someone else. She's kind of like a Hannah Montana character. So when she's a famous rock star, she's Ariel. When she's at home, she's Melody. He meets her as Melody and does not know that she is the famous singer Ariel for a very long time. I'm okay with that going on for a little while, but it went on too long for me to feel comfortable with this romance, with him not really knowing everything about her and really who she fully is. I ended up giving this 2.5 stars, which breaks my heart because the second book in the series is a five-star read. The first book was a four-star read, so this one really just did not measure up for me. I have high hopes for the fourth book, though, which is Tangled by Christina Lauren. Hopefully, I'll pick that up soon. For Pick Pong, I use this for the prompt of series continuation. It is Labor Day, which means it's September. It's no longer August, so let's close out this August wrap-up vlog. I was super slumpy this month. I read no other books. It is my lowest reading month in a very long time, but we still had some really great successes. So let's talk about my stats and my favorite books and all that good stuff. In the month of August, I read eight books. I also DNF'd five books, which definitely shows how slumpy I was. I was so slumpy that anything that wasn't really, really good, I just didn't have the patience for. That was definitely me, not necessarily the books. So I don't want to go bashing all the books that I DNF'd because I think it was really just I was in a reading slump big time. I finally feel like I'm coming out of that now that we're at the end of August, 1st of September. Those eight books resulted in 3,042 pages. My best book of the month should come as no shock to you if you've watched this video to this point, and that is Ashes of the Sun by Django Wexler. This is probably going to be my best book of the year. Considering it beat out God Killer. I just don't know how anything could beat this out. Like, I don't see that to be possible, but we'll see how the last four months of the year go. But it's definitely my best book of August by far. My least favorite book that I completed, now I did DNF5, but I usually stick to my least favorite that I actually read because books I DNF'd, I can't really talk on them. I didn't finish them. Some of them I only made it like 60 pages in. I have very little opinions. So my least favorite book of the month was Kiss the Girl by Zordea Cordova. This makes me so sad. How is a fairy tale retelling my worst book of the month? I don't know how that's possible, but here we are. This is where we're at. It just did not have enough alignment with the original story. And I really just didn't like the romance where she was hiding so much from him for such a long point in the book. But that is the end of this August wrap up. What was your best book of August? I would love to know. Let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.